Before we even get started, it's really good to see you. I like what you did with your hair. I realize I may have sounded a bit frantic when I called, but so glad you were able to make some time. What I have in this little box, for those of you who may have never heard of it, is just going to blow your mind. I've been playing with it for about a week now, this stuff I mean, and mind blown. I know some of you may be upset right now. You had to get up off your couch, rushed over in your pajamas, and for what? Some TIG welding filler rod? But hear me out. Granted, this might look like your run-of-the-mill 330 seconds rod, just like the regular stuff, but this, my friends, has a trick up its sleeve. And let me just get rid of this stuff pronto before I get it all mixed up. This video is going to be about putting this rod to work. We'll see, well, probably stupid examples of what it can do. But to criminally oversimplify things, this is basically tool steel. Let me say that again with my hands out of the way so I have room for text. Tool steel. Out of the box, it's tender. Well, it's a little harder than regular ER70 stuff, but it's soft. Once you weld with it, get some good heat in it, it hardens to around 55-ish Rockwell. That is very hard. Tool steel hard. It's very similar, I guess, to hard facing rods, if you know what those are. But hard facing is just a little different. I think it's formulated more for like abrasion resistance than hardness, let's say. Since we're both already here, let's clear one or two things up before we get into screwing around. This is mild steel, quarter inch thick, six millimeter, flat bar, nothing fancy. And it cannot be hardened. If you try, it'll just get hot, cool down, and be exactly the same. Now, although you might feel differently if you've ever tried to hacksaw through it, mild steel is not really very hard. In fact, it's so soft, it doesn't even make it onto the Rockwell C scale. If you try to do a hardness test, the probe, I don't know, would probably just push right through it without even registering a number. So not very hard in the context of tool steels. In terms of strength, mild steel has a yield strength of about 36,000 PSI. If you put anything over 36,000 pounds per square inch on it, it'll bend and not come back. So why the heck am I even going on about strength? Well, you often hear that welds are stronger than the base metal. You hear words thrown around like harder, tougher, stronger, etc. And although everybody, except that one guy, gets what you mean, regular welds are not harder. They are stronger if you did it right, but technically they aren't harder. Your usual ER70 rod, the stuff you use day in and day out, 70,000 PSI versus 36-ish, but it's just as soft. I went to all the trouble to say that because I was just gonna compare a tool steel edge built up with this welding rod to a mild steel edge, but maybe we'll compare it to a regular welded edge with this ER70 stuff, so no one calls me out on it. If this stuff is as cool as they say it is, let's build up a tool steel edge, sharpen it, and see if we can cold chisel some steel. For comparison, I'm gonna make a second one with the ER70S rod. Far as I know, nothing particularly fancy about welding with these things. DC TIG, 100% argon. I've got it set to about 125 amps. Foot controllers attached. I'll probably start off there, 125, 120, and then just sort of salt to taste. I want the weld material to stick, but I'm not really trying to drive it in there. I'm trying to build up an edge. And there it is. That's the tool steel, and this is hometown classic. Not my best work, but it's not like I'm putting this out in front of a million people. You're looking at three beads on the mild steel and four, I think, on the tool steel, four and a half. Depending how hard you sink the bead, you'll get base metal and filler dissolving into each other. So I put an extra bead on top so we know we have pure unadulterated tool steel or whatever it is they put in that stuff. I am a little worried that I may have overcooked this weld a bit. Subsequent passes making it hotter and hotter. 
I've never been very good at waiting for welds to dry. Hopefully, I didn't destroy its magic properties. By the way, if you're curious, read up on interpass temperature. Let's take these over to the... I can already tell a miracle has happened. The tool steel one, as you expect, is harder to grind. And look at the difference between the sparks on the tool steel and that of the mild steel. I think case closed, but we'll see how these things work. I don't remember which one is which anymore, but there should be an easy way to find out. Well, here's hoping that was the mild steel one. Or this old Tony's got some egg on his face. All right, not so much as a dent. Okay, maybe a tiny dent. That's probably because I made this way too sharp for a cold chisel. But man, that is amazing. Pretty nice. For the record, this is eighth inch mild steel, three millimeters. All right, so it's too sharp for a cold chisel, not sharp enough for a wood chisel. Now, I'll be honest, I've mortised some hinges with much worse. Not usually the type to be prone to whimsy, but it might just be safe to say I'm quite thoroughly stoked. Let's talk about this some more, but first... Fudge. Took the ear clean off that clamp. Pardon me just one moment, but I have an ax to grind. It's a little too light, but holy smokes is this thing sharp. If you couldn't tell, this stick is green. It's tool steel, all right. So the edge did chip a little bit, and granted these aren't the hardest nails in the world, but still. This is my manual bender, a Haasfeld clone. Built this myself, gets a ton of use. The frame's been heat treated. Most of the pins are pre-hardened stock, but one of the accessories I use the most, I don't know what you call this, a little bending dog of some kind, is not. This is just mild steel, I think. I can't swing this all the way around because of the tripod, but you get the idea. Over the years, I've repeatedly built up the edge. The forces on this are high, and it just gets deformed. This should have been, or this should be, a piece of hardened tooling.
This video has been a mishmash of me trying to just figure this stuff out, but I've made a little list. Let's talk about some important stuff. This is called Weld Mold 958. This isn't an ad or an endorsement for weld mold. Just telling you the facts. Buy it if you want. Don't buy it if you don't. Check with your local weld supplier. Maybe they have the same stuff from somebody else. I'm just trying to share the cool stuff I come across. Second, don't chew with your mouth open. Third, and this is important, if you decide to play with this stuff, be smart. This could be dangerous. For example, your lawnmower blade is soft metal for a reason. Don't go giving it a tool steel edge and turn it into a shrapnel grenade. Four, it's expensive. Not inaccessible, but 150 times more than old coat hanger wire and three or four times more than the regular TIG filler. Five, I think. Were we up to five? What number are we? Although this stuff's been laying down great, good tie-in, like zero porosity. Sometimes when these filler materials have strange additives, they can bubble or whatever if you don't have the process dead on. But despite this stuff going down pretty smooth, just messing around here in the garage, be careful with shock loads on tool steels. I mean, that's just general life advice right there. Careful with shock loads on tool steels. Frankly, I'm surprised the hardened edges haven't just peeled off the mild steel base metal. According to the little sales blurb cut sheet, this 958 is for dies and punches, stuff like that. I checked their website and they have a hundred variants of this rod for molds, tools, shears, forged parts, stainless, copper. I mean, there's a million of them. Make sure you talk to your guy, Frank, whoever they are. Be sure you've got the right filler for the job. That goes for anything welding, of course, but probably less margin for error on this fancy stuff. Anyway, that's it for my list. And I think all I've got for this video, I'm going to go pack this away, save it for those special occasions. Hope you liked that, and thanks for watching.